In my goals video, I said I would try to switch programs to Clip Studio Paint. So here is attempt number, uh, yeah, for video purposes, this is attempt number one. The difference this time is that I'm jumping into it. In the past attempts, I was watching a lot of tutorials and gathering a bunch of knowledge knowledge that ended up overwhelming me and had me running back to the cozy comfort of Photoshop. But not this time. This time I said screw it and I just jumped straight into it. And uh, yeah, what I've learned from those previous attempts is that I was gathering all that info, but not much of it was actually applicable to my workflow. So this time I just went in with the expectations that I was going to have to go slow and paint the way I normally do and just kind of look up things as I went, which uh, was actually pretty successful and you'll see why. I started off using a brush that a friend and fellow artist, Heels Draws, found that mimicked my beloved chalk brush in Photoshop, which if uh, you guys were here for any length of time, you know that the chalk brush is literally my favorite brush in Photoshop and I use it for every major piece. So it was a really big hurdle for me to actually feel like I could switch to Clip Studio without that brush. And uh, <laughs> let's be real here, this small act of kindness from Heels is what completely renewed my determination to jump back into Clip Studio Paint. So thank you, Heels. I'll link the brush down in the description if you guys want to check it out. So I played around with the new chalk brush settings to better suit my needs. It's an amazing brush by itself, but I tweaked it for my own workflow. And uh, in the footage, you can see I duplicated the brush three times one was to replace my sketching brush. And yes, I sketch with a brush in digital programs. No, I know there's a pencil and pens, but just don't at me, okay? <laughs> the second brush to replace my flat colors, and then the third brush to replace the oh so nice fluffy brush that just makes everything super soft and wonderfully blended. And yeah, that, uh, that whole process took me probably about 30 minutes to an hour to figure out. And this was actually before I even stepped into the drawing that you guys see, which we're now back into. With those brushes made, I was ready to dive into my drawing, which by the way, this drawing is a request from my patrons in the fluff tier. They requested that my characters Regan and Quill do a roll swap so in this piece, Regan's the fairy and Quill is the human. <laughs> Sketching in Clip Studio Paint worked pretty much the same as it did in Photoshop, especially since I now had basically the same brush to work with. And if anything, the sketching felt much more fluid in Clip Studio, and I noticed that I could sketch more like what I'd actually do on like real paper, and it was great. So hooray for no lag. The brush stabilization is pretty neat. I do feel like my lines were a little too clean at first, so I had to adjust down into a more moderate range before making the sketch. And it's actually pretty cool that you can change that on each brush. And <laughs> also, come on, Pasbury, when are you gonna notice that you haven't saved yet? You're killing me here. Well, good thing autosave is a thing. <laughs> There's the character sheet, and look, no lag. Yay! So far, my flat colors workflow is the same as it was in Photoshop as well, but I could tell at this point I was starting to get nervous the closer I got to the painting part. I'm definitely still learning this new program. I know a very handy paint bucket tool feature exists, but at this point in the drawing, I just wanted to go at it with my current workflow and how I had done everything in Photoshop. It didn't stop me from being curious and playing around with some of the bucket options, which was actually a ple yeah, pleasant surprise, so I'm going to take note there. Messing around with the paint bucket a little more. Uh, 
<sighs> also, I made a new layer for Regan because I'm a coward. Why did I make her so grumpy looking? <laughs> oh my gosh. So yeah, more flat colors going on here. Kind of rinse and repeat of uh, what I did with Quill. I'll definitely be doing some research into how to do the... I don't even know what tool it's called, but the... It's a new feature. It's like an autofill feature and it kind of uses the AI to figure it out. I don't know, but I'm gonna learn it. I'm gonna learn it. I'm gonna do the research and figure that out because that's a really cool thing. And if you look to the right of the screen, you will notice that I am trying to figure out how to make a clipping layer in Clip Studio Paint. <laughs> Which, I won't lie, took me longer than this time lapse lets on. But by learning this, I found that it's actually in a couple of spots. You can right click on the new layer and go to the layer settings and then clip the layer from there. Or there's actually a handy dandy shortcut at the top of the panel. Beautiful. I start laying down my rough shading on this clipping layer for both Quill and Regan. The new chalk brush works pretty closely to how I expected it, but it's not quite as fluffy as the original. This slightly bothers me at the moment, but I keep going because I know the expectations for this drawing was going to be a learning process and that I just need to have more patience with myself. I am fighting with the brush a bit during the blending, especially with Quill's eyes. But again, I do find a solution later in this drawing, so... <laughs> a quick bit of folder maintenance going on there. Moving on to Regan is a rinse and repeat action of getting that rough shading in. The blending worked better this time, and I realized that I just needed the brush to be bigger to get the desired effect. So yay! <laughs> Just as I'm celebrating this small win, I encounter my next hurdle, which is clipping masks. Not clipping layers, clipping masks. Now, usually when I draw fairy wings, I have a clipping mask in place to get that transparent look. Literally clipping the flat color layer, selecting the wings, and then using a soft brush to mask out some parts. For the life of me, I can't figure out why it's not working here. <laughs> Look at me, I'm literally just checking and unchecking the mask because I can't figure out why it's not working. Oh dear. This goes on for about another couple of minutes before I finally decide that I just need to come back to it later. I fill a new layer with brown and then set that as a clipping layer onto my line art and then merge the whole thing. This is something that I normally do at the beginning right after sketching, but I just totally forgot to do it in this piece. Uh, it's a personal choice for me, but I find that it usually softens the whole look and it's an easy thing to change too. You just make a new layer above your line art and then fill it whatever color you want and then clip it to your line art layer and bam. So far, so good. I can tell I'm still struggling with the chalk brush a little bit while blending Quill's eyes, but I keep chugging along. I will say, even with my struggle, the process so far was much smoother than Photoshop. There was hardly a stutter, and that was with me listening to music and screen recording and OBS and also painting, and you know, the program hardly hiccuped. Actually, it didn't hiccup at all, <laughs> now that I think about it. Is this enough to convince me to switch programs fully? Not quite, but it will be. I just gotta figure out how to fully replace that fluffy brush from Photoshop, but don't worry, it happens in this video, so back to the time lapse. I forgot to mention that I'm actually in the painting part of the process now. <laughs> So all that I did was I made a new layer on top of my line art and flat colors and I've just been painting on that one single layer and then just blending things out. I alternate between the line art brush and the fluffy brush. Something that was a lot 
more clunky for me in Photoshop. So it's nice that I was able to make separate brushes instead of having to manually adjust the same brush back and forth. There's probably a way to do that in Photoshop too, but again, I was too comfortable and I'm liking all the stuff that I've learned so far by trying this switch. Oh, is this, I think this is it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is when I finally noticed that I haven't saved this whole time. Oh my gosh. I'm so glad that both uh, Photoshop and Clip Studio have that autosave feature because, oh dear Lord, my gosh. That was the file name of shame. <laughs> At this point in the painting process, I'm still struggling a little bit to blend everything together the way I want it to. The brush is fighting me a little bit still at this point, and I'm just, you know, trying to keep my patience with it and tackle it as if it was more like a cell shaded style. Oh yeah, I hit a button right here and I don't know what it was doing, but it was really funny. The time lapse made it go by really quick. <laughs> and I swear I was doing it for like 10 minutes, just rotating the canvas. And here I'm cleaning up Regan. Since she's so small, I kept the detail minimal. And it's always a challenge with the tiny characters, <laughs> which is often why I end up just drawing quill like in his own panels so I could actually draw him normal sized. Doing a little bit of cleanup here. Oh, some apps. Yay! <laughs> there we go. I saved hair details for last on this one because I knew that at this point I probably would be losing my patience and everything, so I wanted to make sure I had something to reward myself with near the end of this drawing. So you can see me playing with the hair flyaways. <gasps> and this is where it happens. I noticed something while making the background that literally made it so that I could use Clip Studio <laughs> fully. I discovered the airbrush tool, which seems kind of silly that I just discovered it, but look at me go. I'm so happy right now. <laughs> you can tell because suddenly the drawing got a little faster and I'm like, woohoo! It's still not quite the same as my fluffy brush from Photoshop, but it was definitely doing things better and getting my drawing to where I wanted it to go. I'll definitely play around with some more brushes and see if I can tweak the settings like I did with the chalk brush. But with this discovery, most of the hurdles for me learning and switching to Clip Studio were out of the way. At this point, I'm mostly done with my drawing, so I return to that little mini boss, Clipping Masks. I take about 30 minutes searching on the Google to find what I am looking for, and I don't find it. I'm just about to save and quit when I notice this curious little bar underneath the color picker that has a very oh so familiar checker pattern. And you know, at this point I'm just like, why not? And I decide to click on it and casually brush over the wings and it worked. So that was a feature that I don't think was actually in Photoshop. So that's why I didn't know to look for that. And I think it's kind of cool that there's a dedicated button for your masking and stuff. So really neat. I happily start blending away on the wings to get that transparent look. And then a weird blue color starts covering it up. It takes me another couple of minutes to figure out that this was actually just my masked area. And um, in Photoshop, it's red. So <laughs> once I figured that out, I let out a huge sigh of relief. So if you ever get stuck on a layer mask not working, uh, check that little checkered box to make sure that it's actually working there and 
if the masked area thing is turned on, turn it off if it bothers you. <laughs> Otherwise, it'll look like you're painting blue every time, but you're actually not. I felt so relieved that this trial by fire run was actually going well. And the best part was that it still took me about the same amount of time to make the drawing in Photoshop, which really just means that once I get more comfortable with this program, I will definitely have a much faster workflow in Clip Studio Paint. And that, that honestly, it makes me so excited. So <laughs> if I can translate that well into my comic making process, I will definitely be a happy artist. I decided that the last bit of this time lapse would be testing some of the comic features. So I went to town making the speech bubbles and the text. The text tool was a little less intuitive than Photoshop's, but I think as I learn, it will get a lot better. The balloon tool. Oh my gosh, I'm not sure how I feel about it yet. It'll definitely take some time learning and I have to figure out if I can make custom strokes to match up with my current balloon style. If I can figure it out, it will definitely cut some time down and I can spend that uh, making each balloon, but we'll see. I'm really happy that I decided to just try and do this like the, <laughs> the uh, trial by fire method of just, you know, jumping straight into working in this program because in the past I, sorry, little backstory, in the past I, I've had this program, I've had Clip Studio for over a year and I couldn't get past the learning phase. So I kept looking at tutorials and reading up on stuff. And I realized with this drawing that I really just needed to jump into the program and make something versus just studying, which studying used to be my forte. And so it's kind of opposite of how I would normally do things but I'm really glad that I decided to try and do it this way because I definitely feel like I pushed past that learning curve and I actually ended up feeling pretty comfortable in Clip Studio by the end of this drawing. So uh, very, very happy with how this turned out and it stuck pretty closely to my original workflow. And um, yeah, really cool. So that was just a, a couple of uh, end words there. As you can see in the time lapse, I actually went back and um, kind of brushed up the uh, piece a little bit more to kind of match up with my style a bit because I noticed Quill was looking a little funky and uh, <laughs> I had given him a really long neck, which I didn't notice, and my my husband actually pointed it out to me later that day when I showed him. And so I was like, oh no. <laughs> so to answer the video's question, can I successfully switch programs to Clip Studio Paint? I'm pretty confident that I can now and I look forward to learning more about this program as I go and all the features that it has made for artists. So I'm honestly like really excited to delve into the 3D tools and a lot more of the uh, web comic making tools and hopefully, <laughs> hopefully figure out the speech bubble comic balloons and everything. But um, yeah, I will link in the description below a playlist if I can link that. I think I can of all the videos that I've been watching and learning from and uh, hopefully my little comic adventure here could help you guys or enlighten or just be kind of entertaining but uh, yeah so thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video and also if you want to check out my goals it'll be right here on the screen bye